Hi, everyone. Thank you for tuning in to my talk. My name is Farika Zong, and I'm a graduate student at the BioCyphers Lab at the University of Pennsylvania. Today, I'm excited to share with you my work on mapping the human RNA G quadruplexes and genetic variants that affect them using transformer-based modeling. The goal of this project is to detect transcriptomic G quadruplexes, variants that affect them, their functions, and their associated diseases. First things first, a G quadruplex or G4 is a secondary structure that exists in both DNA and RNA. In this project, we'll be focusing on RNA G4s or RG4s. The standard or canonical G4 sequence looks like this. There's a repeat of consecutive Gs followed by a sequence of any nucleotide of length one to seven. A G4 sequence forms a four-stranded planar quadruplex structure called a G quartet. And when two or more G quartets stack on top of each other, they form a G4. For RG4s, besides the canonical G4, there are also non-canonical G4 structures. And within non-canonical structures, there are subcategories or subtypes of RG4s. RNA G4s that were experimentally detected have been found to be more abundant in the non-coding mutator regions compared to the coding regions. On top of that, within the UTR regions, a higher density of RG4s have been found in the five prime UTR than in three prime UTR. This indicates that most of the RG4s don't directly code for protein, but rather might have regulatory effects. And to understand the regulatory effects of RG4s, a previous work from our lab looked into variants in UTR RG4s. We found that these variants are under negative selection and are associated with disease. And as a case study, we found that disrupting a canonical 3 prime UTR G4 in the gene HSPP7 is associated with allele-specific expression in GTEx. This gene is highly expressed in the heart and skeletal muscle, and the SNP that disrupts the canonical G4 sequence has been associated with hypertension in a GWAS study. So here we found that the alternate allele containing the SNP disrupts the G4 um, and is actually more highly expressed than the reference allele that doesn't have the variant that disrupts the G4. This shows that the variant disrupting the predicted G4 has an effect on gene expression and that three prime UTR putative G4 in disease causing genes are enriched for variants. Now, knowing the regulatory importance of RG4s, how can we detect and study G4s? More particularly, my research questions are then, how can we first predict the formation of RG4s at a large scale, and then study the effects of single nucleotide variants that break the predicted G4 formations? And what are the associated diseases for these G4 deleterious variants? And to answer these questions, this project is divided into four steps. First, we want to get the data set of high throughput mapping of transcriptome-wide putative RG4, and then use this data to train a model to accurately predict RG4 focused on 5' UTR. Next, we want to analyze phenotype association of RG4 deleterious variants predicted by the model. Lastly, we want to perform experimental validation on the RG4 deleterious variants. So the first thing we need is data. And to detect RG4s, a high throughput method based on RG4Seq has been developed. This method relies on the protocol called reverse transcriptase stalling, where under the right condition, the reverse transcriptase gets stuck at G4 sites and produces shorter and complete sequences. Such a data set not only provides positions of RG4s, but also the subcategory they belong to. 
However, there are limitations with high throughput assays, some of which are that the assay could be noisy and can only be performed in specific and synthetic states. Furthermore, we cannot run the assay on every cell type and every condition in the population. This motivates us to detect RG forests and their subcategories computationally at a larger scale with high accuracy. In this way, we could make predictions on novel sequences that have not yet been sequenced without having to rely on noisy sequencing technologies. The RG4 seeker data gives us around 5,000 G4 locations in the transcriptome. Now with that in mind, we want to be able to get insights about the G4 themselves and their roles. We want to be able to interpret the results in meaningful ways like which locations are more important, which subtypes, and then predict genetic variants on RG4. So for this purpose, we introduce our model called GFormer, where we fine-tuned a bird model that is transformer-based using RG4 seeker data for RG4 predictions. And then we also take all the five parameter sequences, break them down into sequences of fixed length to feed into GFormer and obtain five prime mutator regions that are predicted to contain G4, which we will include in our analysis later. We hypothesized that a transformer-based model would be good at modeling RG4 because of the advantage that transformer has in capturing more complicated structures or relationships in the input. And since RG4s can be subcategorized into different categories with varying structures and varying lengths, a transformer-based model is then able to overcome this. And while there have been many other computational methods um, developed to detect G4 in DNA and or RNA, most of them only provide predictions. However, we would also like to perform variant interpretation. And before going into variant interpretation, we first looked into how GFormer performs and evaluated GFormer against a state-of-the-art convolutional neural network-based model called G4 Detector. G4 Detector is a CNN-based model that has been shown to outperform other existing models. And here, G4 Detector performance is represented by the bars in red, and they showed that they have the best performance for both in vitro and in vivo of G4 datasets. G4 Detector was originally built to predict DNA G-Force, but in order to perform a true comparison with our model, we retrained it on the same RNA G4 data as GFormer. So for our evaluation, we trained both GFormer and G4 Detector on our G4 seeker data. And then we compared the performances for three different tasks. The first task is a binary classification where the models predict of a given sequence contains a potential G4. The other two tasks are multi-class classification, where the models predict of a given sequence contains a G4 and which subcategory it belongs to. We performed two multi-class classifications for different input sequence lengths. For binary classification, GFormer only slightly outperforms G4 detector. However, for multi-class classification, um, G G4 detectors struggle to accurately predict RG4 into subcategories with accuracy of 0.55 for input length 70 nucleotides. Meanwhile, GFormer performs with an accuracy of around 0.3 higher at 0.83. We also tried a different input sequence length of 200 nucleotides. And while both model performances dropped, a larger drop is seen for G4 detector for both accuracy and AUC. This shows that GFormer is better at predicting G4 subcategories and is more resilient to the changes in the length of the input sequence. So after validating that our model GFormer performs accurately in predicting RG4, 
Next, we move on to variant interpretation using GWAS and VWAS variants. Both GWAS and VWAS are phenotype and variant association studies, but have different approaches. GWAS starts with a single phenotype and examines associations between phenotype and genetic variants across the genome. VWAS is the inverse of that, where a set of variants is tested individually to determine each variant's associations with multiple different phenotypes. To analyze um, existing GWAS hits that are G4 deleterious, we downloaded GWAS hits from the GWAS catalog. We take all GWAS hits in the 5 prime UTI region, and for each hit, GFORMER predicted if an RG4 would form in the presence of the wild type and the alternative allele, obtaining a prediction score for each. We then plotted the prediction scores of the wild type alleles on the y-axis and the delta of the scores on the x-axis. We expected most variants will not affect the formation of RG4 since most GWAS hits are not located in the UTR. So in fact, we're only left with 183 hits in this plot. However, this analysis highlights variants with regions that are highly predicted to contain GForce and the GWAS hit causes a great drop in the predicted score or delta. And this is seen on the top right hand side of the plot. Turning to FIWAS, um, to perform FIWAS analysis, we obtained samples from the Penn Medicine Biobank. PMBB has over 43,000 participants of different ancestries. And after quality check, we're left with around 40,000 samples. Association analysis were performed for European and African ancestries only because of the limitation in sample sizes of other ancestry groups. In preparation for the analysis, we applied our exclusion criteria and excluded related individuals, singletons, and phenotypes with less than five cases in the PMBB. Similar to GWAS, we then take the PMBB variants and find those that are G4 deleterious using GFORMER. We then ran FIWAS for those G4 deleterious variants and an output example of our FIWAS analysis is a variant in the African ancestry population appearing in 93 samples. This variant is in sub T4H1 gene with two phenotypes significantly associated with it, passing the threshold for Bonferroni adjusted significance. The two phenotypes associated with this variant are circulatory and immune related diseases, which have not been studied before in relation to this variant and would be interesting to look into. Another example is a variant in the European ancestry population appearing in 30 samples. This variant is in KRT15 gene, which has been associated with cancers. In our fewest results, um, we find that the variant is most strongly associated with cancerous diseases with the top disease being non-Hodgkin lymphoma, which is a type of cancer that forms in the lymph system. From these two FIWAS plots, we see how GFORMER has the potential to uncover G4 deleterious variants with association with disease um, that is not yet studied. Further, it also has the potential to find G4 deleterious variants with association to diseases that confirms what has already been studied. So for our future work, we want to extend and finalize GWAS and FIWAS associations, investigate relations to RG force, um, of RG force to subtypes and specific locations in the gene. And we will also be performing experimental validation in our lab, measuring the effects of the protein level of the associated gene in the absence and presence of G4 deleterious variants were predicted in G, uh, with GFORMER. And lastly, 
we will, we will be reproducing disease associations in UK Biobank. And with that, I would like to thank my colleagues in BioCypher's lab, especially my advisor, Yosef, as well as my colleagues, Danielle, for being an amazing collaborator and contributor, and Paul for contributing to the FUAS analysis. Thank you.